Hey everybody, welcome back to Revelation Quilts. I'm Suze and today's tutorial is this super easy 3D quilt. I'm calling it Blockheads and it is, it looks complicated, but I love how easy it is. Like this is the easiest tutorial I think I've done. And so it looks like these blocks are just coming at you and floating in midair with this awesome background that I picked. And I wanna teach you how to make it. It's so easy and it would be so cute in a variety of different colors. So let's get started. So this is the block that we'll be making that will make up our whole quilt. And it's really a very simple block. It's just a four patch. So let me show you what we need to make this block. So I've got these little, it's a half of a charm pack. It's 20 pieces and it's just squares. They are, uh, there's five colors in here. And I think I just picked this up at Walmart. It's just a little half of a charm pack. There's these five colors in here and there are four of each color. So I think I picked this up for a couple bucks. It was probably $4, maybe $5 at Walmart. So we're gonna be using a package of those. And I also am going to, for the black scores, I'm just going to use this uh, layer cake. I've just got some and I'm just going to cut those up into five inch squares because that's what I have. And I also have this really cute yardage that we're gonna use for what I call background, uh, the background fabric. And I have cut some of these into five inch squares. And then I've got some yardage that I'm going to use for the borders. So let's get started making this block. Very simple and I can't wait to show you. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to cut our uh, our charm pack squares down to four and a half inches. And so I'm just going to take my ruler and, and that also gets rid of the pinked edges, which is nice. So I'm going to cut that down and then spin it around. And this way I can get rid of those pinked edges. So that's going to be four and a half. Okay, oh, four and a half. Yep, there you are. Get rid of some pink edges. Very nice. Okay, that's done. To uh, one of my layer cakes, I'm gonna cut that into fourths. So I will have four five inch squares. And we want five inch squares for this project. And let me cut that again in half. My ruler is five inches, so that makes it easy. There we go. Now we're only gonna need two of these squares for our block. So one of them we're gonna put aside for now. And the other one we're gonna pair up with one of our background squares. And we're just gonna put those right sides together. They're both five inches, five inch squares. And we're going to make half square triangle unit out of these, actually two half square triangle units out of these. So we're just going to draw a line down the center of this. And I'm just gonna use a pen. The marking is not gonna show. And I'm going to sew a quarter inch away from that line on both sides. And I'm gonna do that and come right back. So I've sewn down both sides of that five inch, these five inch squares. And now I'm just going to cut right along the line that I drew. And what I end up with are two half square triangles with the background fabric on one side and the black on the other. I'm going to press these to the dark side 
like so. And then we're going to trim them and square them up. So a general rule of thumb is that when you start with a five inch square and you make half square triangles this way, your finished square will be four and a half inches. So if you start with six inches, you'll end up with five and a half inch half square triangles. So let me go press this and I will return. I'm back. So I'm going to take my square ruler and my 45 diagonal line will be going right along that seam. And I'm just going to square these up, making sure they are four and a half inches. Everybody's seam allowance is a little different. And so um, you may end up with a block that's just a tad wonky and that's okay. As long as your seam allowance is consistent on all of your projects, then you should be okay. Some people can make half square triangles and never have to square them up. That is not me. I almost always have to square them up just to be sure. And there's nothing wrong with that. And turning it over, same thing. Put your four and a half along the sides and that 45 degree line right straight up that seam. This gets rid of your dog ears as well. There we go, very nice. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do is take that last black square that we cut off of our layer cake, and I'm going to trim that to four and a half inches as well. I could have done that and the charm square at the same time in retrospect. Okay, so what I have is four pieces and I'm going to put them together like this and like this. So that is going to be our block. Now I am just going to take this square on the top for me, it's the top right, and then turn it over. And then this one turns over and I'm just gonna sew right down like this. So I've sewn these together. You can see my little string here that joins up. I just chained piece right down the sides. And now when I open them up, I'm going to press this seam allowance towards my solid piece of fabric here. So that will be going away from the half square triangle. And then this bottom piece, I'm going to also press the seam allowance towards the solid fabric. And so that is also going away from this other half square triangle. So that when I sew my two halves together, those seams will nest up right against each other and I can just lock them into place just like that. So they work out very well. So I'm going to sew right down here and I will end up with a nice four patch. So I've sewn those together and I've pressed everything open. Now you'll notice on this block that once you've sewn everything together, you don't have perfect corners right here, but you have about a quarter inch where it is a flat edge instead of this corner meeting perfectly. And that's what you want because what that does is that gives us a quarter inch for when we sew our blocks together so that when we sew our blocks together, that will cover that. So your, your point will be perfect when you sew those blocks together. So I've got um, all of my blocks and let's see what they look like up on our design wall. So let's take a look at this on our design wall. So as you can see, this creates an awesome 3D effect, which I think looks amazing. And I have just put one of each color down the side and then I made diagonal rows of the same color. So that disperses the colors 
nice and evenly. The background fabric just kind of blends in as a great background fabric, even though it's an actual print. I think it looks, it's neutral enough that I think it looks really neat. Now, in order to make this look very floaty, I'm gonna put some really nice borders around it from the same background fabric. So that'll make it look like these, these um, cubes, I guess, rectangles. I don't know what you call a 3D rectangle. They would look like they're just floating in space. And so I'm excited to see what those look like. But I just wanted to play around with the layout a little bit to see like what it would look like if I spun some of the blocks around. So let's do that for a minute just to see the different options that we have. So here I've spun all of the blocks around so that the, the colors make kind of a four patch in the middle. And that looks cool. Um, that's not the look I'm going for, but I just wanted to see. And so it always is beneficial to play around with your layout and your blocks because as you've seen in some of my other videos, sometimes you might like what you find better. So I'm gonna put this back to the original because that's what I want. And so um, that was just kind of an experiment. So we'll see what it looks like once all the blocks are sewn together and once the border's on. So first I'm gonna sew the blocks together in the order that I originally intended and we'll go from there. I think this is looking pretty good. So I sew, I've sewn all the blocks together and then I've sewn all the rows together. So this is the quilt without the borders. I think it looks pretty awesome. I was just thinking about how cute this would be even in pastels for a little baby quilt or something like that. So I'm gonna measure the quilt, see how big our, that we need for borders. So this quilt measures about 41 inches long. It's tiny and about 32 inches wide. So we're gonna make a border for it and we're gonna start with the side border. I'm gonna put a huge five inch border on the side and this will give it that floating look like these these blocks are just floating on the background so i'm going to cut my border and then we'll put the border on let's let's take a look at that so because my quilt is 41 inches long and i know my fabric is 42 inches wide i know that i can get the side borders out of one piece which is awesome so i don't have to piece together my border at all which is great I'm gonna cut my border, I've got my yardage and I've got it folded in, in half and then folded again. And I've got my fold line right along one of the lines of my cutting mat so I know that it's laying straight. And I'm just going to cut a clean edge off of this following the lines of my cutting mat so I know that I will get a nice perpendicular edge. So let's start clean with a nice cut there. And then I'm just going to measure five inches and I'm actually wondering if I want to go a little bit bigger. Do I, what do I think? Um, I think I do. So I'm going to go to six inches and that's just going to make my quilt a little bigger, which is good, but it'll also, um, will imp make a big impact on those floating so they'll just look like a huge focal point. So let's do a six inch cut here. And then another six inches. Let's see, that'll put me at 24 inches on my mat here. Okay, nice and straight. I've got this ruler that sits, that, that has a lip on it so it hooks to the side of your mat which is nice okay let's cut another six inches very good okay so we're gonna sew those on I'm not sure I'm gonna do a six inch border along the top and the bottom I think I'll go a little shorter for those so um, let's get this border sewn on and we'll see how big of an impact that made so I've sewn my borders on both sides and now I'm just gonna trim that border 
so it's nice and even with the, the with the top of the quilt and I'm just gonna go right along I'm gonna put one of the lines on my on my ruler right on that seam line that is there all right and then I'm just gonna cut straight across there we go that's for the scrap pile that I'm organizing and let's do a different part here nice and straight Oh, my ruler slipped, but that's okay. And another side here. I'm excited for this one. This one's going to look pretty neat. Okay. Okay, we need one more corner. And then we're going to sew... Um, we're going to, oh, I shook you. Shaking it up. And then we're going to put borders on the top and bottom. And I am going to go not six inches on that. I'm going to go a little smaller. And I think I will go um, maybe four inches for that. So I'm going to cut a couple four inch. So got my fabric here nice and lined up two four inch borders and I know it's also less than 40 actually I found out this fabric is 44 inches wide which is nice this fabric is beautiful it's Michael Miller which is um, one of my favorite fabric manufacturers kind of partial to their fabric just seems to be very nice quality and anytime I can get my hands on some I try to do it so let's go four inches on this border that should be good Wait, am I at four inches no I was at three and a half no can do four one two three four okay Measure twice and cut once, right? And let's do one more of those. Forward this time. Yes, ma'am. Okay. There we go. Oh, come on, really? Never fails. Always when I'm on camera. Okay. So let me get these borders on the top and the bottom, and then we will take another look at this awesome 3D quilt. Okay, so I've got all my borders on, and these blocks really do look like they're floating and just kind of coming out at you. I love it. I think it's awesome. It's, it's pretty modern, and I know some people don't like the more modern quilts, but I really do. I prefer something like this to something that's super, super traditional. And uh, I just think the possibilities on this are endless. I was thinking, you know, along with the pastels for a cute baby quilt, also for these, for these colored squares, you could put something in there with a print in it or a pattern or something like that. And that would even, you know, give it more character and more interest. I think the background looks awesome. It kind of gives this, this overall, um, kind of depth to it it just really makes it look like those those squares are jumping out at you and so I love it so I'm calling this the blockhead quilt and I hope that you had fun with this I loved it it, it was super fast I literally had it together in less than a week only working on it a little bit every day so um yeah I like it I'm gonna bind it uh, after I quilt it I'm gonna bind it with just a black strip and uh, that will keep that kind of minimalist look about it. Uh, this is Suze from Revelation Quilt signing out. Like, share, and subscribe. I love your comments. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.